we are at the campsite. Hopefully we get a pitch. As you can't reserve one here, you have to just show up and hope for the best. Back in five minutes. Take the next right, then you will arrive at your destination. So, after waiting for about 15 minutes, the warden still didn't show up, so we've helped ourselves to a little pitch. Here we are. And when he shows up, we'll sort things out. Seem to mostly have this place to ourselves. Coming on the back end of a school holiday, I think we've chosen the right time. So, it's pretty quiet. I figure I'll give you a tour of this beautiful site. Starting with this small river. You can actually swim in here if you're brave, but it will be cold all year round, given it's water coming directly from the river. Incredible, right? Let's take a little tour of the main camp itself. We're just a little bit out of the way. But, I mean, I don't think there's a bad place to pitch here. So beautiful, so serene. So we drove, we drove in through here. The main entrance is just that way. The misty skies almost give it a mythical quality. Really is quite beautiful. Shed. Wi Fi zone. It's a little shed for Wi Fi. Let's check it out. <laughs> Quite cozy, eh? <laughs> comfy little. Comfy little pog. Not too bad at all. Now we have a map of the UK. <laughs> Not bad. Look, I mean, we really do have this place all to ourselves. You saw there was a group of lads having a fire on the, on the rocks by the river. A guy just passed me, I think, off camera. Um, oh, and earlier on there was a call of kids waiting behind us that were going to pitch a tent on the other side and they've gone ahead and found a pitch just like we did. The main sign with a few rules. Fairly fair rules, don't cause damage, be quiet after 11pm, no fires after 11pm. We explicitly prohibit the use of axes, saws, bows and arrows, guns, fireworks or unregistered motor vehicles. That's reasonable. You can't f shoot guns. I think that's probably par for the course of most. Most campsites in the UK, you can't just shoot off guns. Over here is the wash facilities. Some more place to pitch. Yeah, motor vehicles, 
Um, plenty of room and it's just completely empty. We really do have this place to ourselves. Maybe the warden's abandoned it. Water. This is where you get your water from. Please use the tap on the back of the tree. <laughs> the water comes directly out of the tree, that's cool. I think that's about it, really. As you can see, it's quite a huge, huge open space, plenty of room. The campers almost entirely unoccupied. Brilliant. Well, I think it's time for a beer. I'm gonna go grab a beer and maybe sit out by the river, regroup. Hopefully, the warden comes soon and validates our pitch. I'm sure he won't take any issue as there's nobody else there. We're actually supposed to park nose or tail towards the river, but there's plenty of space, so we've just gone sideways. That should not be a problem. Well, I'm going to go back to the camper, grab a bottle. Well, back by the river. Just going to enjoy a beer. That's me signing off for now. Maybe just relax for the rest of the afternoon. Try and find this warden eventually. Does your walk to the local pub look like this? Probably not. That's because you're not in the middle of Glencoe. Walking there is easy, somewhat pleasant. It'll be the walk back that might prove a challenge. After a few of the local ales. But at least it'll be downhill, mate. It'll be downhill. That's it. Downhill will be in our favour somewhat. The darkness. Yeah, the darkness might prove more challenging. But we have head torches, we have phones, and spirit. Clack again, much busier than I thought it would be, but I suppose when you're the only pub in the wilds, you're bound to attract some footfall. Certainly no weather spoons, branches around here. So we made it back to the van with the help of the head torches. Going downhill was a lot easier than uh, going up. It actually seemed a lot quicker too. So we're going to finish it with an eye cap. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Tamna Villain. Tamna Villain. Uh, it's a single malt whiskey. In fact, I did show you on my previous video when we um, had a look what was in the contents of the uh, van with all the steaks and the bottle of whiskey. That's the bottle of whiskey. We haven't opened it yet because we already had another night. one. And something else I picked up from the Glencoe Visitor Centre that I forgot to show you. And for anybody outside of Scotland watching this, which is probably everybody watching this, um, I picked up some Scottish tablet, which is something that's probably unfamiliar to you all. So I'm just going to open it, I'm not going to have some just yet because it might ruin my palate for the whiskey. But I'm just going to show you what it is. And it's almost like fudge, except instead of soft and chewy, it's got kind of like a coarse, grainy, um, almost instant mm. bite to it. And it's... Um, Practically pure sugar, so if you're diabetic, <laughs> you don't really want to be going anywhere near this. But if you don't care about your health and you like tasty <laughs> things, it's actually really good. Um, so you can see it in there, that's all, I'll, I'll bite it open. So here's a piece. Apparently... Uh, Russia makes something similar, and I think they call it Russian toffee. Uh, I might be wrong, it might have a different name, but apparently it's pretty much the same process. It's just like a ton of 
butter and sugar and condensed milk and it's literally just a block of that and when you bite through it's just very coarse and fake but when you bite through it, it's very soft and it starts to melt in your mouth I think it's very good Kevin doesn't like it um, he's worried that it could give him diabetes if he had one but for me yeah I quite enjoy it and it reminds me of my childhood but I'm not gonna have one of those just yet because yeah it might be my palate for the whiskey. I just wanted to show you guys, um, as there might be people watching that isn't familiar with it. So anyway, we're going to end the night with a nightcap. Um, probably another relatively early night. Um, that's another day uh, today in Glencoe. Perhaps arguably more beautiful than the urban area. Which might be controversial. Well, there's, no, there's no date. There's no date as far as I'm concerned. Don't yeah, I? yeah. For me, for me, I was just trying to be like uh, diplomatic. diplomatic. But yeah, for me, Glencoe is the jewel of the Scottish West Coast mm -hmm. and perhaps even of the United Kingdom altogether. It really is just staggeringly beautiful, and I hope I've conveyed that well today on my camera. I'll find out when I'm editing. But cheers. Good morning. It's uh, around 20 past 8 in the morning. So mild, like, the weather is really surprisingly good. I could probably do without this hoodie, actually. There's no wind, there's no chill in the air. It's just nice and pleasant. We didn't even have the heating on the van last night, and it wasn't cold at all. I've shown you this spot before, but this is what it's like in the morning. Mm. A little water bottle where the boys were having a fire last night. I want to give my hair a little primitive wash because I can't be bothered walking over to the shower block. And since this is our last morning and we're going home later, I can have a proper shower when I return to my grand's. Is going to be cold. Oh well, let's see. Freshen me up for the morning, eh? It's not actually too bad. clean water because it's directly flowing from the river so it's quite refreshing anyway we're gonna have to go and sort out the van and then think about heading off back to back towards Glasgow well it's fairly grim out so Heading back down the road towards civilization. So, this is coming towards the end of my trip. Still, some scenic places to pass through, so I might get some more footage despite the weather conditions.
stop for motorhomes and people to pull in and get some amazing views. You know, go up, stop to get some sandwiches there. But look at this. Sometimes it's hard to believe that this is in the UK where I live. Same as my crap a little industrial hometown of Rotherham in South Yorkshire. It's on the same land mass. It's amazing. Really. That's me back at my grandma's house in Boarhead, near Glasgow, which now signifies the end of my weekend trip through the Scottish Highlands on the, on the west coast. So what did we do? Well, we visited Oban. We explored the Isle of Mull very briefly. We ate exquisite seafood in Oban at the famous Green Shack and then on our trip through Glencoe, after seeing all the mountains, the Three Sisters, we saw the Glencoe Visitor Centre, learned a very little bit about the Scottish Mountaineering Club and I gave you my limited knowledge on the history of the Glencoe Massacre. Then we had more exquisite seafood, arguably much more exquisite seafood, and stayed on a barely occupied campsite in the middle of some beautiful mountain ranges by the river. All in all, very good trip. That's it for me. Until next time.